In this video, I want to explain how ideally we would measure the fit of a given model. And we're going to start off from just Bayes' rule, so we have that p of theta given x, uh, a vector x, in other words, our posterior, is equal to p of x given theta times p of theta divided through by p of x. And so what we can actually do is we know we can use the posterior distribution here to produce a posterior predicted distribution, which we denote for a single data point p of x nu given x. And that just tells us what is our sort of best prediction or, or distribution which encompasses what we think about predictions for the next data point given that we have observed a data vector x. And so this distribution here is in a sense an approximation to some unknown true data generating process which I'm just going to write f of x nu. And basically what we would like to do is if we ideally knew what f was we could compare f with our posterior predictive distribution. And so in essence, what we would be doing there is we'd be taking our posterior predictive distribution, which might look something like this. So the bottom axis here is just x nu, a single data point. And we would be comparing that distribution with our true data generating process, which might be represented by this orange distribution here. So this is just f of x nu. So what's the best way that we can use to compare these two distributions? Well, we already know of a way, which is given by the callback Leibler divergence. So what we could do is we could calculate the callback Leibler divergence in going from f of x nu, in other words, our true distribution, uh, to our posterior predictive distribution, f, or sorry, p of x nu given our vector x. And we know that that's just equal to the integral of f of x nu times uh, the log of f of x nu divided through by p of x nu given x. And here we'd be integrating over all sort of possible ranges of x nu, but I, I'm not going to include that as sort of the integral bounds here because uh, in general that's pretty obvious. And what we can do is we can actually sort of expand this right hand side. So what we get now is we get two integrals. We get an integral of f of x nu times the log of f of x nu uh, times dx. Uh, or integrated with respect to dx, minus the integral of f of x nu times the log of p of x nu given x integrated with respect to x. Then what we do is we consider both of these terms and we see that the first term here essentially is just a constant because it only depends on f of x nu and so that doesn't tell us anything about how well our model fits the data. Whereas this second term contains f, this unknown true data generating process, and also a term which depends on our model that we fit. And we call this second term here, which we're going to use to evaluate the fit of our model, the expected log predictive density. But essentially all we do to minimize the callback Leibler divergence is we must maximize the expected log predicted density because we can do nothing about this first term here, so we don't even consider it. Okay, so why have I called this second term the expected log predicted density? Well, the idea is that essentially we're integrating with respect to f of x nu. So in other words, we're working out the expected value of the second term here. So we're working out the expected value under the true data generating process f of log of p of x nu given x. And because this term inside the bracket is just the log predictive density, or the log posterior predictive density for its sort of full name, and because we're taking the expectation of it with respect to f, this is what we call the expected log predictive density. And it's the ideal measure of a given model's fit to data. 
it's the ideal measure because it assumes that we actually know f, whereas in practice we never know f. And so this is an expression to which we aspire, but we never quite get there. And the idea is that we try our best to estimate the expected log predicted density in reality. And in the next few videos, we're going to describe some of the measures which are used to estimate this quantity. And one thing I've just noticed is that we should actually be integrating in both of these integrals with respect to x nu. So sorry for the confusion there.